Welcome back to New Zero Land. So if you're new to my channel, I've been riding this Zero SR for five and a half years now. And I feel like that's a huge deal for me because I've never owned a vehicle for this long. Either the excitement goes away and I just lose interest or something new comes out and I just have to have it. Or I could just be searching for this ultimate unicorn that doesn't actually exist, but I need to buy a whole bunch of bikes to try and find it. But there's a reason why I've kept this bike for so long and I want to talk about it. So to tell the whole story and how my bike ended up like this, let's start from the beginning. Flashback. I got my Zero SR in December of 2015 on a trip back to California to see my family. It was a demo model from San Jose BMW and I rode it around the Bay Area for a few days before I had to fly back to New Zealand. And it was amazing. It felt like the future. And that was the whole idea behind getting it and going electric. It was already the year 2015. I don't know, maybe because I was born in the 80s, just saying the year 2015, it just sounds like it's so far into the future. It's like that year can only exist in sci-fi movies. And so I figured it was time to buy a motorcycle that could belong in one of those movies. And then I shipped it to New Zealand and within a week, I took it on a track day. That was a huge test of its range, performance, everything, because the track is over 160 k's away and of course I was gonna ride it there. And 160 k's was exactly the range Zero said it could do. So I think I got there with barely any percent left. I shot a video about that trip and that's kind of what started this whole YouTube channel. That in the video, Electric Motorcycles, What's the Point? Which Zero actually shared on their website back when they shared community videos. So suddenly I was a guy that people knew. Like I had a following and so I just started making more videos. Then a few months later, this guy Tim imported a Zero from Australia. Back when Zero was in Australia. So I had another Electric Motorcycle friend to ride with. The short trips around Twisty Roads were a lot of fun and we plugged in anywhere we could to slow charge just enough to get a little bit further. But we both wanted more, and I kind of feel like that's what happens with zero riders, and just to stereotype the most common zero rider, you probably have the gas bike first, and then you buy the zero for commuting, but then this is where the zero effect happens. So you're riding your bike five days a week, and you start liking it so much that you say, okay, this weekend, instead of taking the gas bike, I'm gonna take the zero, just to see how it feels. So you take it on the twisties for the first time and like it way more than your gas bike because it's smoother, it's more responsive. That instant torque coming out of corners is addictive and not having to constantly shift gears means you can just work on your lines and have fun. That and you notice the birds for the first time. You can hear your tire tread on the pavement. Suddenly your bike isn't the focus anymore. You have this epiphany that it's less about what you're riding and more about where you're riding. So then you say, well, I went there with my electric bike. Where else could I go? So you gradually take it further and further, pushing the limits of the battery until you need faster charging. So you buy faster chargers. That's what I did. I bought some DigiNav superchargers and one day I rode over 300 miles, 525 kilometers. Oh yeah, and I had a custom tank and seat and clip-ons and a whole bunch of other stuff on the bike because I was inspired by this guy in Australia who customized his and took it racing. I feel like Zeros are such awesome bases to customize that people go nuts. There's so many custom personalized zeros out there that I also had to make this one my own. And that was a super fun time, but I felt like in adding the clip-ons and changing the riding position and adding fast chargers to the bike, I kind of lost the plot a bit and I was trying to make the bike something it wasn't. I also lost the sweet cargo area that was in the tank. Um, actually, in 2015, they came with these little bags that you could like remove. You could put all your stuff in here, take it out when you park the bike and take it with you. And you could fit so much stuff in that tank area. Just so much stuff. It's really handy. And by this time, my wife Jen was using it to commute to work. And she really liked the cargo space, so I swapped it all back to how it was before. And I just ended up buying a second bike for myself that was more what I was trying to turn the Zero into. It's sad to say, but I feel like all roads lead to Energica. It's a slippery slope. Anyway, I guess that sums up my five and a half years of riding this bike. Um, now you don't have to watch any of my other videos. So I said it was cheap to run because it costs barely anything to charge it, but maintenance and expense wise, I have spent a little bit of money. I'm on the third set of tires, so those were 600 bucks each time. I replaced the brake pads with EBC censored pads. Those were 60 bucks. I had to get a new turn signal relay because it got too wet and fried, but that was only 12 bucks. I had to replace the dash also because of water. And my onboard charger died, 
who knows, maybe because of water too. Zero chargers seem to be consumables, and unfortunately they cost $800 US to replace. But lucky for me, one of my buddies had one, and I was able to just trade him some stuff for it, so I didn't have to pay for it. So that's an $800 that you might have to pay at some point, um, but I didn't, so I'm not carrying it. We snapped the belt once, but that was an accident. It wasn't because the belt was worn out. Although we've only ridden it 26,000 kilometers, which is like 16,000 miles, so nothing is really worn out. I know for a YouTube channel that's all about motorcycles, we don't ride nearly enough. So all up, the amount of money I spent was about 1,500 bucks, but the tires and brake pads are stuff that you would need on any other bike, like gas or electric, so the zero specific parts came to about 250 bucks. And since we don't go and buy gas, there's no way of actually knowing how much money we spent on electricity. Like sometimes I'll charge for free, like charging stations are free. And if I stay at the motel overnight, it's free. And so um, a lot of the times I've just been charging and not paying anything. But let's just say I've always plugged in at home and it's always been about 25 cents per kilowatt hour because that's kind of what they charge here. I checked the logs and apparently we've used 1641 kilowatt hours of energy, which is like 160 full batteries. I've spent a little over 400 bucks to charge this bike. And I feel like that's pretty good. Like $400 to ride 26,000 kilometers is pretty good. Comparing that to buying fuel for a gas bike, it would have cost $2,400 just for the fuel, not including, you know, tires, brake pads, valve adjustments, oil changes, all that other stuff. So if you're interested in going electric to save money, it will definitely save you money. Like I had no idea how much cheaper it's been. So I talked to a lot of people who say they're waiting for the tech to get better before buying an electric motorcycle. They're waiting for those revolutionary solid state batteries or super capacitors or whatever the internet says is coming soon. And it's always, I'll buy one maybe in five years. My take on that is you could wait five years for something better to come out, or you could ride an electric motorcycle for those five years while you wait. So that's what I did. Would I do it again? Absolutely. Would I buy another zero? Yes but only if they sort out DC charging. I realize I've been talking so much about what these bikes are like to live with and how they feel to ride, but not really what I want to see in the future. And a DC fast charging Zero FX is the bike. I feel like that's the only bike that would get me to buy another Zero. I also wish it was more waterproof. All of the replacement parts I've needed have been water related. The battery and motor are sealed, right? They're totally waterproof. I remember there was like this promotional stunt where they dumped the battery into the ocean just to prove that it was waterproof and it was safe. So anyway, all the important stuff is waterproof, but the connectors are not. So if you ride in the rain, which it rains here all the time, you get all these little flashy error codes on the dash because there's isolation faults going on. And if the kickstand sensor gets water in it, then suddenly your throttle doesn't work because it thinks your kickstand is down. And I think it's annoying that you can't even wash your Zero with a hose without something frying like a gremlin. But aside from riding in the rain, this bike is amazing. And we've been test riding a lot of different bikes lately and I've always used the Zero as a benchmark. I compare everything to the Zero and what I've found is that my 5 year old bike is still better than 90% of the new electric motorcycles that are coming out. I mean it's faster, it's cheaper, it's lighter, it goes further. Zero made an awesome bike, but obviously this whole video you've been looking at the Zero in pieces behind me without any explanation. I was really hoping I could shoot this video on the road, like after I fix it I could talk about the issue just being a small like quick fix kind of thing and I could shoot everything in my helmet, riding the bike, talk about how awesome it is, but unfortunately it's a little bit more complicated than that. Hopefully this isn't the end to end, um, but we'll see, yeah. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.